What's up YouTube, Dow here from Zephyr Games, bringing you what you've been waiting for, and that is an update in physical form to Time Thief Rank 4 Spam. This deck is insane, and you'll see that with the combo that I'll produce for you guys at the end. But with all of that out of the way, please smash that like button, hit that notification bell, and subscribe. If you get this video above 50 likes, I will do a test time video for you with this deck and show you all of its consistencies. Do not forget as well, we do have the Ghost from the Past giveaway going on, I'll put the link in the description below. Now. With all of that out of the way, let's dive head first into Time Thief Rank 4 Spam Profile. So, for the Time Thief, we are playing Triple Winder. This is your Deneb, your Stratos. When it is normal or special, you get to add a Time Thief card from your deck to your hand except himself. If you, de uh, you can detach a material from an XYZ monster you control to special on this card from the hand. We've then got the strongest and weakest card in the entire Time Thief deck, and that is Regulator. The reason it's so strong is if you control no monsters, you contribute this card to special summon two Time Thief monsters from your deck with different names in Defense Edition, and you don't even negate their effects. The weakest part is, it tributes as cost, so if it gets ashed, you've got nothing. Now that can be a both blessing and a curse because it tributes as cost. If it didn't tribute as cost and you got ashed, you would then be able to continue making your plays with extenders, but if you does get ashed and you have a gamma, you can protect it because it tributes as cost. Pros and cons. Then of course we've got two of the brand new adjuster, uh, adjuster. So you can only use one of the effects per turn. If it is normal or special, uh, sorry, if you normal or special a Time Thief monster or monsters, except itself, you can special summon this card from the hand. If this card is normal or special, you can send one Time Thief monster card, uh, sorry, Time Thief card from your deck to the graveyard. You can only use one effect per turn and only once that turn. Now the reason she is so good is, in the old combo you would go Regulator into Winder into Beetle Ship. Now you can actually go Regulator into a Duster, a Duster and Winder. So then you get a Send and a Search. She also counts as a free extender at any point should you normal summon a card except Regulator because you want to control no monsters to use Regulator's effect. But if you normal summon a Winder then you get a Duster for free. This then gives you free fodder to put Beetle Ship in the graveyard, which as we all know is free fodder to come back. From the graveyard. We've then got one Chrono Coder. Now with this card it kind of works as another option to send off of the adjuster because it also works the same as Beetle Ship in a way that if a monster you control is banished or leaves the field um, because of an Arcana effect, which of course Redoer does, you special summon this card from the graveyard. Its other effect is during your opponent's battle phase you contribute this card and the next battle damage you take would be dealt to your opponent instead. Then of course we've got the one Beetle Ship. Some people play two. The deck is currently sitting at 45 cards, so I've tried to cut everywhere I could, um, but the idea is to bury the bricks that you don't want to see. Um, Beetle Ship is quite simply, quick effect, you contribute this card to target a Time Thief mon uh, XYZ monster you control and attach one card from your opponent's graveyard to it as material. But the effect you're going to be using more times than not is if this card is in the graveyard, you can detach a material from an XYZ monster you control and special summon this card from the graveyard, but banish it when it leaves the field. Now obviously Beezel Ship, if it's detached as a material, will not technically be leaving the field as a monster, so it doesn't get banished. Only use the effects once per turn. For free general extenders, we do run at triple parallel XZs. Now we're actually only running free link monsters. Now obviously all the link monsters have spare zones, so this is always going to be live. But what parallel can do is it can actually help get you into some of your combo pieces earlier. Or, if you're really worried about Nibiru and you open this card up, you can also go into Tractrix Reflesia to protect from Nibiru if you wish. But I'm really going to be using Parallel as free extenders, whether it helps get me into my Link Monsters early on or helps just get me into my Rank 4s early on. Uh, it just helps you kind of consistently rebuild the combo. We've then got two Dogmatic of Theo, the Iron Punch. This is just a free level 4 extender. Now, you could use Ecclesia if you want to, but why go for an Ultra when you can go for a Common? The exact same thing kind of pursues the exact same, that if you control a monster special summon from the extra deck, you can special summon this card. Now, Ecclesia, if you use it as a second effect, will lock you out of the extra deck, but Iron Punch doesn't do that, you're just using it as a free summon as long as you've got a monster from the extra deck on the board. The reason we've gone with two and not three is because he technically isn't a free summon, you still need a monster special summon from the extra deck on the board, so cards like Danger Mothman kind of take its place in a sense, because Danger Mothman actually serves double purpose in this deck. If you open up any part of your combo, like your Ancient Cloak, or if you open up like a Driver, you kind of have free fodder to discard and get to the graveyard. So if you resolve Mothman, you get a draw on a free level 4. If you don't resolve it and it goes to the graveyard, you still get a draw on a discard. So you can manually set up your graveyard, which works out amazingly well. 
Then for the Raid Raptors, we play three Raid Raptors, one Strangle, one Singing, and one Raider's Wing. Now, Raider's Wing, you want to be special summoning off of your um, four Strix. Your Singing Lanius, you want to be searching off of your Y Strix. And your Strangle Lanius, you want to be searching off your... Uh, sorry, four Strix is the Searcher, Y Strix is the Summoner. Always get them mixed up. Now, obviously, Raider's Wing has the same effect as uh, Beezle Ship. You can detach a material from an XYZ. You control a special summon it. Strangle is the only card, apart from the Rockets, which I'll show you in a minute, that locks you into anything. And that is if you use its effect, it locks you into Dark, which all of the time thieves are anyway. So the only thing you're stopping yourself is getting to Affinity after its point or getting to a Lambda after its point. So you've got to be very, very careful, but it does work out nicely. Then for the Phantom Knights, we've got the one Boots and the one Cloak. Cloak is the only one that really hurts if you open it up. If you don't open up Cloak, then it basically means... Uh, sorry, if you open up Boots, then it just means you don't banish Cloak from the graveyard. You can still use it as a free extender. If you open up Cloak, you can still do the combo, but the combo means you need another extender because the extender of Boots will no longer be there to help you. Then for the Rockets, obviously we've only got two Rockets. You've got the one Tracer. So the fact is a Tuna does allow you to play Savage Dragon if you want. I personally don't in this build, but it is an option that you can do. And like I said, I've tried to keep this as budget as possible um, because there's actually no real need to overexpend on any of the cards in the deck and it still produces the same results. So Tracer gives you the ability to also pop a face-up card and then special summon a rocket, so that gives you an additional extender as well. But it does lock you into Darks from the extra deck. The reason we've got my rocket recharger, not just because it's a level 4, but on the odd occasions, if a dark monster or monsters you control, especially some from the extra deck, is destroyed by a battle card effect, you can send this card from the hand to the uh, hand or field to the graveyard, target one of those destroyed monsters, and special summon one dark monster from your graveyard with a different original name from that targeted monster. Only use the effect once per turn. While you control a dark monster, special summon from the extra deck, your opponent's monsters cannot target this card for attacks. So it does have a little kind of alternative options, which is why we play Recharger over anything else. Then moving on to the standard hand traps, Triple Ash Blossom. You want to be able to kind of use the most generic card right now. It could be Imperms, entirely up to you. Uh, Gamma. Gamma is actually searchable. I was considering cutting this with, of course, the one driver. I was considering cutting this, but then Matt said to me, oh, wait, but then you can protect your... Um, you can protect your main card. You can protect your, where is he, regulator. I'll get there eventually. You can protect your regulator with a gamma. So I was like, ah, oh, yeah, good point. It kind of works as a better call by the grave. But also gamma is searchable because you make lambda, you banish redoer, you search gamma in the end phase. Moving on to the spells. True or quick launch. Not a once per turn and a free extender. Like literally you need no setup. It's just special summons a rocket monster from your deck. Yes, it can't attack and it gets destroyed during the end phase, but you're not going to leave it on the board and you're not summoning it to try and attack. This is a free extender that requires no setup, no monster from the extra deck, no controlling no monsters like Photon Flasher or anything like that. Free extender, it's the best one around, which is why we play it. We then play a good stack of one offs. So I do play the one Instant Fusion. Now, the only issue with Instant Fusion is the space in the extra deck. So if you don't want to play Instant Fusion, take it away. But the one thing with Instant Fusion, which is why it's close to Quick Launch, is again, it's just a free extender for a level four monster as long as you have a thousand life points to pay. Then for the Time Thief cards, we do play the one Time Thief startup and the one hack. Now, the startup is a little bit more important because sometimes you do, not so much brick, but you do open up with like a winder plus a bezel ship and you're like, oh, how can I get two level fours on the board? You go, right, normal time winder, search up startup, startup, special summon, done. So it does come into play sometimes, but you could arguably cut it as well. Time Thief hack is another one where you could arguably cut it. The reason I like it is because not only because it combo off well with quick launch, because it is a face-up continuous, but it does protect all of your XYZs. So the idea is your XYZs can't be targeted by Imperm or Veiler or just general card effects and can't be destroyed the turn they're summoned. So if you're going second, this does stop your opponent just popping them outright, and it does stop them just targeting, targeting them to destroy them. So the other thing behind hack as well is going first, you can set this up and it means your opponent can't Imperm your Infinity, they can't Imperm your Four Strixes, they can't Imperm your Redoers, your Barrels, anything like that. But it does mean that you're putting a big target on the back of all of your link monsters in um, Four Strix, Lambda, and of course your Rusty Bodish. So it has pros and cons. But like I said, if you open up Quick Launch, this is actually a really good card to get to. So like as you'll see in the combo, if you open up Quick Launch plus uh, the Regulator, you actually get to go a little bit further as well. Uh, then of course we've got the Rank Ups, which is Rank Up, Soul Shave, and Magic Force. Magic Force is optional. 
But the reason I've done with this is it technically gives you like an Appalooza that can't lose its attack during your opponent's turn. And if your opponent drops a Dark Roller no more, you can still activate it. Uh, if you wanted to be very, very spicy, you could actually put in um, a Raid Rat to Ultimate Falcon because you have more than six Darks in the grave by the time you get to the ability to activate this. So you could just summon yourself an Ultimate Falcon with a material, if not more materials, that can then burn your opponent for a thousand and reduce their opponent's attack. So if you want to be spicy, that's an option. So Soul Shave, you pay half your life points to target a Ray Raptor XYZ in your graveyard, special summon it, and then special summon a monster that is one rank higher from your extra deck. So that's how you get into Infinity. And the Rank Up Magic basically allows you to turn um, a Dark Monster... Uh, you get to banish one or more Dark Monsters from the graveyard, and then target one Dark XYZ monster you control, special summon from your extra deck one Phantom Knight, Ray Raptor, or XYZ Dragon XYZ monster that is equal ranks higher to the amount you've banished. So for example, if I'm going for a rank four to a rank five, I just need to banish one Dark. So that is how you make Requiem Dragon as well. The final one is Monster Reborn. Again, just a free extender. It can be a little bit iffy for the pure sense that you need to get the monster to the graveyard. And there isn't really, apart from Almirage, which is arguably something you could put in here because you want to then put it into the graveyard, it does make your combos a little bit more difficult because your Rusty Bardish needs dark, so you're not really getting rid of it that way. You would then need to use it to make your Lambda, and it does make it a little bit tricky. But the idea behind this is you make your two, you get your two monsters on the board, you make your XYZ. If your opponent tries to stop you, you've still got Monster Reborn to bring it all back. Now, I'm not playing Call by the Grave purely because of a 45-card deck. I don't want to rely on opening up my one-off to try and save my Regulator. I'd rather play more continual like, extenders so that if my Regulator does eat a hand trap and I can't stop it, I'm still able to keep playing. Then for the traps, we play Triple Phantom Knights of Shade Brigadine. Free extender, searchable as well. Um, sets up your redoer with a trap card so you get a free bounce. Very important, which is why we play it at free. And then for the final ones, we've got the one Fog Blade and the one Retrograde. Now, the reason I've gone with the one Fog Blade is when you're doing your combo, unless you open up any of the pieces, you need to choose between having the Rank Up Magic Force, the Shade Brigadine, and the Fog Blade. So there's not really, very few times, unless you've opened up with this already, do you end with this and this. Which if you do, that's like, these three are like the Holy Trinity. Because you'll end up with these three, plus your board would still be a Redoer, a Lambda, a Hand with a Gamma as well, and an Infinity. So you'd have the absolute nuts. Um... But sometimes you need to choose between the two, which is why you only need to read one to ones. And if you go second, these two cards are like a bit meh, like you can't really use them, whereas the Brigadine you can. So it gives you a balance of going first and second. The Retrograde, again, like I said, you can probably take out the hack if you really don't want to have a 45 card deck. Uh, but the Retrograde is probably your best out and out spell and trap negator. And then it puts that spell and trap uh, under your redoer. Chances are it'll probably be a spell because the spell will then give you an additional draw. And it's very rare that your opponent's going to play an imperm during their turn unless they've already preset it so that's just the kind of options that you can, can be looking at with this deck moving on to the extra deck we'll start off with the link monsters first because we only play three of them and then we'll do the fusions well i say fusion fusion so for the link monsters you've got the one y strix the one lambda and the one bardish that's it that's all you need now, the only thing you'd probably want to change the lander for could be something like an IP Mascarina. And if you're going to do that, you might consider cutting the Gamma. But I think the synergy with Lander is just actually too crazy in this deck. The fact you make Redoer, which is your go-to rank four, bounce it out, get a Gamma. And then if you activate Gamma, you can then still get a Lambda, uh, not a Lambda, you can then get another Gamma. So if your opponent foolishly destroys, um, if they foolishly destroy your... Driver, you can then get another Gamma and go again. For the Fusion, we play one Mud Dragon. Uh, the only argument is you'd probably want to make this dark so that if you do lock yourself under anything, you can still summon it. But it's very rare that you should actually have to use your input, uh, your instant fusion late game, like uh, later in the combo. It should be done earlier on than anything before you lock yourself out. Then for the XYZ, so we'll go with the staple ones first. You've got your Abyss Dweller and you've got your Tornado Dragon. Back row and graveyard. These are very specific, so they could be cut if you wanted them to. Um, and the other issue is you can't make these as your last XYZ, which can become a bit of an issue because when you're doing the combo, which you'll see at the end, you kind of pretty much set your board up to have um, only one space free. So you want to make your redoer to bounce the redoer out to trigger the lander to then get two zones free to make another XYZ. Um, and by the time you make your second XYZ, you lock yourself into darks. So it can be a little bit tricky. 
For the other XYZs, of course, we are playing double um, four streaks. You go through both of them in the combo. You can play three if you want to try and protect the combo, but ultimately I don't think it's necess uh, necessary to do so. We've then got the Dark Requiem. So if you're not playing the rank up, you can take this out and be a bit more aggressive. You could go for the Arc Rebellion if you wanted to, but the Requiem gives you a non-hard once per turn trip on the gate. And Rebellion can actually put in work as well if you want to make him aggressive rather than going into this straight away. So you, if you're going second, you can make this, gain the attack, attack, and then make this with one negate. So it's still good to play. Um, then we move on to, we'll do the time thief last. We've then got the one infinity. So obviously you're going to use the four shave to use four strix and infinity. Just gives you a negate to play through Nibiru's as well, or protect under Nibiru's. Plus uh, infinity can absorb to keep its materials and keep you having negates. And then for the time thief, we've got the one perpetua. The one double barrel and then double redoer. Again, redoer could be cut to one if you really, really want to, um, but it is your go to card. These two cards, more so double barrel, is more of a force in because double barrel doesn't have the same effect that redoer does to just automatically attach. So we already know what perpetua does, we already know what redoer does. What double barrel does is when your opponent, um, opponent activates a card or effect, you detach up to three different types of monster, uh, sorry, three different types of materials from this card. Monster, Spell, and Trap, then apply the following effects depending on which material was detached. Monster, gain 400 attack. Spell, take control of one face on monster your opponent controls um, until the end phase. It can't declare an attack or activate its effects. And Trap card, negate the effects of one effect monster on the field until the end of the turn. You can only use the effects of um, Double Barrel once per turn. So, the issue is, the best effect needs it to have a trap. So, unless you are using uh, Perpetua to put a trap to it, or unless you're using Shade Brigadine to make it, it can become a little bit more restrictive. Yes, the spell is great, but there's no way of using a spell as a material unless you're attaching it with Perpetua or with Flyback, which we don't play, uh, which is why Redo is a little bit better. Now, nine times out of ten, your combo, you end with two rank fours. So you have the ability to make two rank fours. So you, you'd probably make Perpetua and Double Barrel, but nine times out of ten, you're probably going to be making Redo. So... Your end board is then either going to be Redoer with a Double Barrel, if you have saved the Shade Brigadine, or it will be a Redoer plus the Perpetua, so you can attach a um, trap to the Redoer, or the spell for the draw. But 9 out of 10, you're probably going to go into your Dark, Re uh, Dark Rebellion XYZ, because then this is going to be free negates. So this is just saying that if you want to reduce the Time Thief involvement for the extra deck, you can do. I wanted to keep it as bu uh, budget relevant and Time Thief relevant as possible, which is why we've gone this route. Um, I still think Perpetua is really good in this deck, but you do have a couple of flex spaces that you can move around. So the Abyss Dweller Tornado Dragon if you want to, the Dark Requiem combo as well. Uh, you can kind of play around with that as, if you want to. But other than that, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for the full video of the Time Thief Rank 4 Spam. Now, the reason I call it Time Thief Rank 4 Spam is, as you saw in the profile, we do play the majority of Time Thief monsters. But we do obviously play other cards as well. So it's not a pure Time Thief deck. It is a Time Thief Rank 4 Spam deck. I will now reset the board state and show you the two card combo, which is going to allow you to decimate your opponent. And like I said, if you get this to 50 likes, I will do a test down video to show you the consistency as well. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the very basic two card combo for this deck um, of technically Time Thief Rank 4 Spam. So all you need is Time Thief Regulator specifically and then any extender. Now, what really comes down to is what the end board can be. So the end board is very, very powerful with like five to six to maybe even seven negates if you open up perfectly. But this combo can be produced with more cards in your hand as well. Like if you add another two extenders in this hand, which is very, very easy to do considering stuff like Winder, uh, Beazle Ship and all the cards like that can be summoned. Also, you've got the Phantom Knights of Shade Brigadine. Uh, you can still end on a pretty similar board. So with Regulator, it is your best but worst card, as I've explained in the profile as well. I will also try and do test hands for this deck so you can kind of see the consistency of the end board and how it produces the, the end board. But like I said, in order to unlock that, you just need to smash that like button and get it above 50 likes. With all of that out of the way, we'll start with Regulator. So we're going to normal summon Regulator and we're going to use this event to tribute and special summon two time thieves from the deck. Now, obviously, this is a massive choke point if you get ashed, but that is where, of course, um, Gamma comes into play. Now, in the old combo, what you would do is you would summon out Winder and uh, Beazle Ship, but now what you can do is you can summon out Winder plus you can summon out uh, the brand new card of Adjuster. Uh, 
A Joster will then go as whatever chain you want to protect the most, and she will end up sending from your deck to the graveyard your Beazle ship. This obviously sets up your graveyard revival plays for future play as well. Now, this is where the Winders search can be adaptive. So you can choose to add either the Retrograde to give you an out and out negate for a spell and trap and set up your uh, redoer more consistently when he comes back. The other option that I like to search is uh, Time Thief Hack. Now, the reason I'd go with Time Thief Hack is you can actually get um, an additional extender off of the back of Time Thief Hack coming off of Quick Launch because you can use Rocket Tracer to pop the hack and then get you an additional search. Uh, on top of that as well, it does protect all of your XYZs from being targeted by card effects, uh, which is great because it protects your four stricks and uh, your redo and stuff like that, but it does paint a very big target on the back of your Y stricks and your um, Lambda alongside your Rusty Bardiche because obviously they're Link Monsters. So, we'll continue to do the combo. I'll put both of them here so you can see the options and then I'll explain how the combo differs depending on the route you go. So you're going to overlay your winder and you're going to overlay the adjuster, and, uh, adjuster I keep calling it adjuster, uh, and you're going to go into your four stricks. You're going to detach your material off the four stricks to search you out your singing lanius, wherever that one is. There we go, I'll put all those to the top. So you search out your singing lanius, there you go. Uh, and then you use the effective Beazle Ship Engraved to detach another material to summon itself back. Now you can put this as far out of the way as possible, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you then go to Special Summon down your Singing Lanius and you're going to link these two together and go into your y Strix. Now this is another point where the, the combo can become more difficult is if you've opened up any of your Raid Rats or Monsters. Um, but then ultimately what you do is if you do open up, um, for example if you open up your Singing Lanius then you want to be able to search out a different one. But you don't even need to do that search, you can just leave it, um, and you don't really need to trigger the first four strikes, you just need to be able to get single lanius to the board to go into wire strikes. So wire strikes effect will go off to special summon down Raider's Wing because it counts as a Raid Raptor and a Phantom Knight card. You will then overlay your Beazle Ship and your um, Raider's Wing to go into your second four strikes. Now this is where it gets really important. So you need to specifically detach the Raider's Wing, and that will allow you to use the effect of four strikes to search you your strangle lanius. But it will also trigger the Y strikes effect to set directly from your deck your rank up magic soul shave. Now if you've opened up your soul shave already, then you can set your phantom knights of rank up magic force. So either one is perfectly fine. So we're going to go with the soul shave. Before you do anything else, activate the Soul Shave because this is now the point where after you activate this or even as you activate this, your opponent can't really Nibiru you because the effect to summon back from the graveyard and then use it as um, XYZ material is all in one turn. So straight away, if they were to go Nibiru on the activation of Rank Up, absolutely fine. Chain resolves backward, Nibiru clears the board, Rank Up comes back, brings back the four Strix, overlays into Infinity and then you've got Infinity in the token to continue your plays. Yes, you do pay half your life points, but you're now protected from the Biru from the following or the rest of it. Plus, you've got a, a negate set up for the next turn. So then what you want to do is you want to detach the material off of four strikes using the effect of your Raider's Wing in the graveyard. Keep in mind that because Beazle Ship was sent as a material, it doesn't get banished, which is very important. And then what you're going to do is because you've got two darks that are going to lead up to a Link 3, you're going to use those to go into your Rusty Bardish. Now this is again where the combo can alter depending on if you've opened up any of the Phantom Knight cards. The only time it ever comes an issue is if you've opened up Cloak and you don't have a way to send it to the graveyard. So we're going to send Cloak. Now again, you've got three targets. Uh, well, not three targets to set off a Cloak, but you've got three targets to set off of your Bardiche. So you've got the Fog Blade, your Rank Up, and your Shade Brigadine. Now, Shade Brigadine will only be used if you don't have the Quick Launch Time Thief hack kind of play. Um, but it also helps you get that additional extender as well. So we're probably going to go with the Shade Brigadine on this one. And then you're going to banish the Cloak to search you out your boots. So this just keeps your plays going. Keep in mind, what you want to avoid is you want to avoid using your Raider's Wing as uh, Link Material because it will get banished. But it's not the end of the world if it does get banished. Because then what you can do is you can then ultimately um, bring back your Singing Lanius. So you're, you're absolutely fine depending on the route you want to go. Again, I'm going to keep those there. So we're going to special summon down the boots. Now here are your options. So if you don't use the Shade Brigadine and you choose to go with Fogblade or the Rank Up, you will get you will banish the Raider's Wing. That's just how it works. Because then your Extender will then come off of your Rocket Tracer. And if you want to get the Lambda, you need to use these now before you use the Tracer because it locks you into Darks. If you went with the Retrograde 
and you didn't go with the Time Thief hack, then you would go the standard Phantom Knights of Shade Brigadine because then you've got no reason to use the um, Tracer effect to pop. So, we'll go with maximum play. So, you're going to link these two off. Your Raiders Wing gets banished, your Boots goes to the grave, and you're going to go for your Lambda. So, that's going to go there. Now, so this would be the case where we don't get Shade Brigadine and we stick with Fog Blade and then we will banish Boots to get us the Rank Up Magic, which again is Dicterran on the rest of the play as well. So we'll stick with the Retrograde uh, in this scenario. So now's the point where you kind of want to use the Quick Launch. The Quick Launch will get you obviously the Tracer, um, but I don't think it's actually necessary. Uh, yeah, it is. I think we might actually need the Shade Brigadine. I'll take that back. Yes, yeah, so you need sorry, you need the shade brigadine or you need the hack. So you need one or the two because you do need to get two level fours on board. So the ways would then work is you're either going with the retrograde or the hack, and then depending on what you've get, you'll then go with the shade brigadine or I would personally say or the fog blade because the monster on the board is going to produce three negates anyway. So the only thing that the fog blade does is give you a little bit more to play with. So let's say we go with this board here because then we want to keep the retrograde for the spell and trap negate for more consistency. So then what you would do is you'd activate the quick launch. The quick launch will summon out your tracer, as it is just a free extender at any point. Um, you can activate the Shade Brigadine now. It doesn't really matter because you've now done all your dark effects. So what you can do is you can special summon down the Strangle Lanius. It depends on if you want a spell or trap to be added. So I'll show you the options you've got here. And this is where the rank up can become a fog blade as well. So you then use the effect of the Strangle Lanius to bring back your Singing Lanius. You're now locked into Darks from the edge there, which is completely fine. So then if you overlay the two Raid Raptors, doesn't really matter which way you do it, and you go into a Redoer, you then use Redoer's effect to detach the two materials and banish, which will then trigger the Lambda in the end phase. Uh, then what you want to do is you then want to be able to... Two turns where I've gone wrong. There we go. Uh, <laughs> Shade Brigadine. And then the Shade Brigadine, you have two options. So option number one, because it's a trap card, is you can overlay it into a double barrel. Now this will give you a monster negate. It will then bring back the read, or the reader is coming back anyway, but this just gives you a monster negate. Um, if you don't want to do the double barrel, you can of course go into your perpetual. And this is only if you've done the hack play. If you've done the hack play, because you're not going to be able to guarantee a spell or trap to go to redoer, you'd then uh, use Petrulia, uh, Perpetua sorry, to do that. But the best play, if you've chosen to go with the rank up magic, would be to go into your Dark Rebellion XYZ Dragon. And I'll show you how this then works and how we play through your opponent's hand. So then during the end phase, before you do anything, the smartest option, so you don't need to rely on your opponent, is use Infinity to absorb the ro Rusty Bardish. Which is perfectly fine, doesn't matter, because then if you've got the Fog Blade engraved, you bring Rusty Bardish back anyway. So the end phase, Lambda will go off to give you the Gamma, and then you bring back your Redoer. I mean, it doesn't really matter if you absorb, it just gives Infinity a bit more attack and additional negate for you during your turn. Or if you use the negate during your turn, it then gives you the negate during your opponent's turn. Anyway, so now your board is like this. Now what you want to do is during the main phase, you want to shot shotgun this early. You want to make sure that you upgrade your Dark Rebellion straight into the Requiem Dragon, because then this gives you three monster negates. So now basically what you've got as well is your Redoer will attach a material from your opponent. So in order, the way you want to kind of do this is you want to hope that this is a monster. If it's not a monster, then you're in a little bit more trouble because you can't actually use Gamma. Um, but that's something to keep in mind and you need to think further forward from it. But the idea is that you'd activate Retrograde. Uh, chances are you're going to be negating a spell because unless they've got Imperm, which I think would be silly to... like, And if you've top-decked it, trying to use Imperm on any of these wouldn't really be worth it in my opinion. So let's say it was a spell. So you draw a random card. You then use the effect as well to banish your Redoer. So that then gives you your space to drop the Gamma. So then if your opponent does anything, you drop the Gamma plus the Driver. So that's two interruptions already. Then you've got three interruptions coming off of your Requiem Dragon. And then you've got one interruption coming off of your Infinity. So three, four, five, six interruptions. And then at the end phase, this goes, they, let's say they get banished. That can then trigger Lambda again to just to deck Finn to get you another Gamma. Or of course you can get another Gamma by bringing out Redoer as well. Perfectly fine. So that if they did destroy, foolishly destroyed the Driver, you could then use Gamma again. Um... But you banish all of those. Let's say you get a Gamma just to depth in, in the end phase. You're going to draw a card for turn anyway. You've still got three cards from your opening hand. Keep in mind. And then Redo is going to come back. And Redo is going to steal the top card of your opponent's deck. 
So you, your opponent would need to play through six interruptions, a mixture of back row and front row, and keep in mind, even if they, if you think that they're going to Dark Lord or no more, you, you can save the rank up spell, and then turn the rank up spell, and then you still got three negations. So then your hand is still pretty lit, and you've got all of this as well. Like, th this deck is absolutely nuts. I love it. I think it's so good. So, like I said at the start, shout out to Matt on this one. I think it's a great little deck. Um, there, there is space in the extra deck for you to be a little bit more flexible as well. Uh, technically, with the uh, the extra deck we've got left, I think this leaves us with about five extra deck monsters. So, you can then play around with whatever you really want to. But, with all of that out of the way, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share. Like I said at the start, if you want to see a full test stand video for this deck, then please, of course, smash that like button, get it above 50 likes, and I'll bring that for you tomorrow. As absolutely always, guys, stay safe. And don't forget, of course, we've got the Ghost from the Past giveaway, so I'll put the link to that in the description below. But, as absolutely always, guys, stay safe and happy dueling.